Which okay. parasha? Which uh, where are we now? Mishpatim. 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 So we are, we are. Um, last last week, the Jewish people in the in the Torah portion, the Jewish people got the Torah on Mount Sinai. Cool. Um, actually, there's a continuation of that at the end of this week's parsha. Very interesting how the narrative of the giving of the Torah is divided up between two places. So it doesn't. It. I mean, it kind of jumps around. The Torah is is very confusing. It's not in order. So you've got the whole narrative of how the Jewish people come to the de Sinai Desert and how they prepare themselves and how Moses goes up the mountain and comes back down and goes back up and comes back down a few times day after day. And finally, the the appearance of the revelation on Mount Sinai, the thunder and the lightning and the shofar sounds and everything is spoken about in last week's parsha and the par portion of Yisro. The Ten Commandments are brought there also. And then... In the end of this week's parsha, in the parsha of Mishpatim, Mishpatim means laws, because it talks about the many, many laws. Um, more like, I guess you would say, um, you know, um, laws. I mean, regular. We're not talking about mitzvahs. We're talking more about legal stuff. Mm -hmm. um, some mitzvahs, but not, I mean, it's the legal stuff of mitzvahs also. I'm, I'm saying we're not talking about rituals. We're talking about we're not talking about what we would call. The mitzvahs, which are chukim, which are the ones that we don't understand, or edus, which is the the test, the ones which are testimony on God, like Shabbat or Passover, things that remind us of the miracles. We're talking about um, laws that apply in, you know, that apply in any in any civil society. Obviously, the Hashem's laws are different. Hashem's laws are unique, are specific, um, so they're not just any laws that apply in any civil society. But they are ones that we would we would come across, and um, if we didn't have the Torah, we would be ex we would be searching for these also, um, at least eventually over time, as we see the world is coming to that place. Um, at the end of this week's parish, the Torah continues to talk about the the story of Mount Sinai. It talks about more the um, work that the Jewish people did, so the sacrifices. Um, and there's a whole long story with the sacrifices and the blood and different things that they did in preparation for God, for, for the giving of the Torah. So even though Mishpatim, the laws, were given on Mount Sinai to Moses after the whole thing happened, um, it doesn't go in order, it goes back and forth. Um, and then actually the story of the golden calf is in three weeks from now. So it's all mixed mm -hmm. around. And... Um, Ein muktam or batorah. There's no earlier and later in the Torah. Everything is, everything is is uh, mixed around. So we're going to learn, and we're going to learn today about the four guardians. Um, in this week's parsha, the part of the laws talk about a situation. This is we're gonna we're gonna be on in on Exodus, um, chapter twenty two, Shemot chapter twenty two, verse six is where we're going to begin. And here we talk about four different ways that an item could um, end up be going from one person's possession to another, being held in, in a borrower or a renter or someone else's possession and um, willingly by the owner. Obviously, somebody could steal or they could, you know, they could do other things to get hold of an item from another person. But here we're talking about four ways that the owner willingly gives his item. And we're talking specifically about things which can be mitaltalim, which means things that can be moved around. We're not talking about land. And we're not talking about servants. We're not talking about um, money or documents. We're talking about items um, that um, furniture and vessels and things like that that a person would give, would lend or rent or or um, safeguard in somebody else's possession. Mm -hmm. um, Interesting. Try yeah. Um, no, it's still not working to share the screen. Okay. Mm. So here we are in um, um, verse six. Um, does somebody want to read it for us? Verse, verse six through 11. I'll read it. <clears throat> Go ahead. If a person gives his friend money or articles for safekeeping and does not pay. Sorry, I said it's not money. I said it's not money. It is money. So there we go. This it says, the... it says money or items. Or oh, items. Yeah. Yeah for safekeeping and does not pay him for his services and they are stolen from the man's house then if the thief is found he must pay twofold to the owner seven if the thief is not found 
the homeowner must approach the judges if he is challenged by the owner to swear an oath that he has not laid his hands upon his friend's property and then he is exempt from compensation since he was not paid for his services. Just In every a, case... Go, just a minute, you're going really, really fast. I'm wondering if we can look at them one, one at a time. One at a time, because for instance, you, the uh, verse seven, you read that if the thief is called and uh, not, if found. not found, he goes to the judges, but in the Torah, it says he was called to God. Elohim, Elohim, Elohim is, so I mean, what, how this, the, we're talking about the, here we're talking about the owner approaching the, the one who he, he safeguarded the possession and his possession and saying, where is my item? He right. says it got stolen. Yeah. So they, so where are they going to go? Go talk to God. They're going to talk to the representatives of God, which are Elohim. Elohim actually, whenever we talk, when often we use Elohim as judgment. The, the group that does the judgment. So this is the base then. This is the court of law. But you're right. It says Elohim. I understand that. I understand that it's that it's going to be the court of law. But I think it's very important to know that in the Torah, it actually says Elohim. Mm -hmm. It doesn't say judges. It's it's like it's right. like the judges are representatives of God in this case. That he's being called. I think, I don't know. To me, it's a big difference. I'm yeah. actually, I'm just reading in the Hebrew, so I'm listening okay. to you. So I'm just aware of the differences, that's all. Uh, you want me to go on? Yeah. Go on, yeah. Okay, eight. In every case of dishonesty, when swearing an oath, whether it is about an ox, about a donkey, about a lamb, about a garment, or about any lost article, if a witness will say that this thing here is the very thing which you swore about, saying that it was not in your possession, then the claims of both parties shall come to the judges, and whoever the judges declare guilty must pay twofold to his friend. If a man gives his friend a donkey, an, an ox, a lamb, or any animal for safekeeping, and pays him for his services, and it dies, breaks a limb, or is captured without witnesses, then the dispute between the two of them is decided by the guardian swearing an oath to God that he did not lay his hand upon his friend's property to use it for himself. Its owner must accept the oath, and the guardian does not pay. However, if it's stolen from him, he must pay the owner. Okay, let's, so that's, there's a bunch of different things over here. In between, we had this thing about twofold and Happy one second. So we had the, the thing about paying twofold. We're going to leave that for a second, because um, that's about about stealing. That's a different. That's a different. That deals with the, with the thief, not with the guard, with the guardian. So we have we have over here an unpaid guardian is the first thing in verse number number six, where um, somebody entrusts something to somebody else. Somebody safeguards something else in somebody else's possession. They're not paying for the service. Right. So the Torah tells us that now when the when the owner approaches, the, it got stolen or something happened to it. Whatever happened to it, that actually doesn't make any difference. But according to Jewish law, if we look at the other verses in different places, whatever happened to the animal, as long as the, the one who was looking after it wasn't, wasn't being negligent and, you know, didn't take it and let's say took the animal and put it outside of the barn, you know, he did, he was, he was doing what he was supposed to do. He was protect, looking after it in the best possible way. Then, if it dies, or if it gets stolen, or if if um, or if if it get or if something else happens to it, then the the um, the guard makes a has to has to have, you know he has to deal with the claim of the owner. So he makes an oath saying, "I didn't steal it. I didn't. I didn't. I didn't do anything. I didn't. I wasn't negligent with it. I I didn't wasn't shalach I didn't. I didn't um, put my hand out on it. I didn't do something to destroy it." And then he's he's um, he's done. He is let go because you know he he did his job and he made an oath and um, and now the owner has to deal with losing his item or finding the thief or whatever it is. In verse number eleven, I believe it was, or number number ten or eleven, the Torah tells us about a different case, which is 
somebody gives their um somebody gives their, their donkey or something else or a different animal or or a, a different um a, a different item to another person. And here we're talking about when some when they were paid for it. So they paid for the service. If they paid for the service. Where does it say that uh, that he's paid for it? You're not. It's it's. It doesn't say it clearly. Um, you're right. It doesn't say it clearly in the Torah. Um, but that's how it's understood from the from the from this the um, texting of all the verses. If we take them all apart, we see there's a different law. We see that the law over here is that he has to. If it gets stolen, he has to pay. Right. So it's different than the law we said before that says if it was stolen, he just has to make an oath. And the, the thief has Are you to looking at verse 9 now? Yeah, it's got paid in parens in English here. But it's it's got it's got also in my footnotes from the Talmud, there's the four there are four guardians, the unpaid guardian, the borrower, right. Not, the paid guardian, and the renter. Right. So so Noga's asking if it says it clearly. It doesn't say clearly that he was paid yeah. for it. You're right. It doesn't say it clearly. I guess it's um, between the lines. The truth is that I was just asking which verse because I didn't see it. So I thought you'd tell me which verse. Oh. <laughs> but yeah. it sounds like it's not clear. Okay. I don't actually have. A, I'm looking on my phone now. I don't have it because I didn't. I was trying to read from the text. Um, looking at the to find the verse. Yeah, but it's not clear. It doesn't say it clearly, and it's all derived in the Talmud and based on looking at the different verses. What are we dealing with over here? Mm. So here, in a case when somebody was. When somebody was, um, they were they were paid for it, paid for the service. Then they, um, if it if something happened to it, which was you know, um, you know, it got it 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 died, or it was taken by or it was taken by armed robbers. So then there was nothing that nothing that God was able to do. They did their best, you know. They took responsibility, but they did as much as they could. They protected it and they they tried. But it was taken by armed robbers, or it died. It wasn't in the hands. It wasn't nothing that they could have done about it. It, was, it, didn't, it didn't die because they were negligent. It died because it died because it got sick. So then we say, you make the oath, swear that that was actually what happened, and you're done. You're free. But if it was stolen, I paid you to look after it. So you got to pay. So you should pay for it. Yeah. Huh. So this is so this is the second case. This is the the paid guardian. So we have the unpaid guardian, and we have the paid guardian. Hmm. Um, in English and American common law, that's called a bailment. You know, if you if you park in a public garage and you look at the ticket you pull out of the machine, it always says this is not a bailment. So, which is proclaiming there uh, no responsibility if your car is no broken into your phone. You can put it in signs everywhere in the parking lot. They say, don't leave your belongings, blah, blah, blah. Right, right, right. But the, on the ticket, it will say, this is not a bailment. Okay. But this is a bailment. Right. <laughs> Alan, do you, want, do you want to read um, verse number 13? I don't, I don't have the uh, book in front of me. Sorry. Okay. Sorry about that. Yeah. Um, 13, I can read it. If a person borrows an animal from his friend and it breaks a limb or dies and its owner is not working for the borrower, he must pay compensation. If the so owner we, is... Uh, so yeah, we'll leave the next verse, but this, a bit, this is the third case. This is a borrower. Right. Now, a borrower, it's a full-on it's a full -on favor that they're getting. So it's the opposite of the unpaid guardian. That's right. doing a favor, a full on favor for the for the owner. Here, he's borrowing it. So we say, whatever happens, I don't care if it dies. I don't care if it was taken by armed armed robbers, whatever it was. I gave it to you as a I gave it to you as a favor. You 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 give me back what I gave you. Right. So it, too bad that it happened in your possession, not in mine. You're gonna want you you have to pay for it. Yes, you you have to deal with the consequence. <laughs> so this is the borrower. This is the third. This is the third case. It's. <laughs> It's actually interesting. The Torah calls it four guardians, even though this is not really. I mean, the borrower is also a guardian because the borrower has to guard the possession that he's borrowing. He can't just leave it to roam. So this is the third case. But this is why it's it's a little bit confusing to me because they're very clear here in the Hebrew. It's very clear. It's like if he asked for something as a favor, right? So that's the borrower. So I don't understand how do you know 
that the previous one is that it's with money. Well, do you, you see that there's a difference between between verse um between verse six, um, or or between verse seven, let's say, and verse eleven, right? So so in verse eleven, in verse seven, the Torah tells us if it gets stolen, he has to make an oath. In verse eleven, it says he has to pay. Verse so we're seven. Talking... Verse seven, it says if you can't find the thief, then the balabite the the owner, uh, the person that was supposed to guard it, is called to God. And if he didn't t take anything from his, yeah, I think. Do you think the call to God is just another phrase for swearing an oath? I'm wondering. Yeah. But to me, I have to admit that I think that the English really waters down the idea here because God is infused everywhere here. It's all about yeah. you have to be completely honest because you're going to be calling to God. It's not just a judge. Right, but you're swearing the oath to God. Right. Yeah. Right. You're right. And 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 they have to actually, there's a, I think he has to stand in front of a Torah or hold a, a, a holy item in, a, in their hand. So there's, there's three oaths in the Torah, which are very serious oaths, which are called uh, biblical oaths. Mm -hmm. And there's this one, the oath of the guardian. The other ones are when somebody is denying that they owe money to someone and there's one witness or they they agree that they paid that they owe some money but they are denying the full amount in those two three cases they have to make an, a biblical oath which is with a i believe they they they're very the the judges are very um they scare the this doesn't apply in today's times this is only when there was a sanhedrin but they basically scare the the, um, the the person to tell them that this is very serious and how bad, you know, they're making an oath to Hashem. Mm -hmm. um, and this is part of, this is a, one of the ways that often people would be, would say, you know, I'm, I'm not telling the truth because it mm -hmm. wasn't just a regular oath. It's an oath to Hashem. Yeah. Right. You have to remember that most of these people or all of them did not read and write at that time. So everything is really based on, did I say it or did I not? Mm -hmm. Are mm -hmm. there enough witnesses for everything? Mm -hmm. yeah. um, so finally, we have the. Let's just. I want. Let's go to the last case, which is, um, verse number fourteen. This is the fourth. The last case, which this is im sachirhu which means if it's rented, then it has come for its rent, or it's included in the rent. Well, basically. And the Torah is very brief over here, and Rashi, we have to have Rashi in the Talmud that explains. But the last case was a, was a borrower. Here we have a renter. So in the case of the renter, it's it's the instead of the owner paying the guardian to look after it, the renter is paying the owner to use it. But you know, it wasn't like they got it; they got a free service. It wasn't like they got it; they would. It was the guy was just doing a favor. They paid for it. So here, actually, there's there's um, a lot of discussion in the Talmud. What does this mean? What what is the law over here? And based on what different things, it comes out that this that this law is the same as the paid guardian. So, so just like the paid just like the paid guardian, if it was stolen, they have to pay. But if it was, but if it got lost in some other kind of way, which was beyond their their abilities to do anything, they they are they 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 don't have, they're not responsible. They don't have to pay. The same thing over here that the renter um, pays. The renter is paying for it, so therefore they are for stealing. If it gets stolen, they're they're responsible because that's something you know you look you were you took it. You have to look after it. But if it was. Um, if it was a different, if it got lost in a different way, then they make an oath and they are, they, they don't have to pay anything. Yeah. So this is the, these are the four. So these are the four different cases we've got. Well, that's, we've got the borrower on one side. We've got the paid, the unpaid guardian on the other side. The unpaid guardian pays nothing in any cases. The borrower um, pays everything in all cases. The paid guardian and the renter pay if it was, they, they pay if it was stolen. Hmm. They don't. They make it. Only have to make an oath if it got lost in some other kind of way. Hmm. Clear. Hmm. Good. 
Yeah, yeah. I wish I had known this before my many years ago when my apartment was burglarized and I paid a friend two hundred dollars because she had given me cash to buy something for her. I wouldn't have paid her if I knew this. <laughs> her money. They took her money in my apartment. There you go. Yeah. Okay. There's a the movie like that where somebody's taking money out of the from the bag teller. And a bank robber comes in, and the customer is trying to give the money back to the teller before the robber gets. <laughs> there's, there's so much. I mean, these laws are fascinating. There's so much about the laws of buying and selling and renting and borrowing. I mean, just if you, the, I learned the Rambam every year, Maimonides, and we go through these. Right now, we're learning the laws of, actually, these laws specifically, exactly the laws of borrowing and being a guarding something for someone. You know, if it says. What's Alan? What you just said, you know, if somebody sells something to another person, so when does the purchase? When does the purchase take place? When does it? When does it come through? So I don't know yeah. how it works in in this in in America, but in in Torah, so so it has to be actually it has to be picked up. The item has to be picked up by the by the mm -hmm. um, purchaser, by the buyer. Um. So paying the paying the money is not enough. They still have to take. They have to take the item to their possession. Or for something which is too heavy to take, they have to do some other kind of acquisition, which which basically they are pulling it towards them or whatever it is. And um, the reason being that, or one of the reasons that the tar that um, that the Torah tells us, so it doesn't tell us clearly, but the commentaries in Talmud says that if um, if we say that um, that the purchase takes place at the time of the of of giving the money. Then what's going to happen is, um, in between that time, if something happens to, let's say I, let's say I buy, um, I buy um, a, a piece of furniture from you, um, and I pay you for it, and now I have to send my moving company to go pick it up. In between that time, you have a fire in your house, God forbid, hmm. and so so you're going to be looking at worrying about all of your 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 items. But you're not going to care about my item because it belongs to you. Belongs to me already. Belongs to the other guy. So we say no. That's why. So you have responsibility. Otherwise, you have to give the money back. So it's um. So this is this is actually similar to what you just mentioned. Yeah, um, completely different. Not relevant to this. I don't even know if it's in this week's parsha, but just an interesting point. It's really it 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 always amazes me when I when I learn this. This was just thousands of years ago that we came up with this stuff. You know, it's our our grasp of human psychology uh and fairness and justice is just so advanced i mean it's it's not any less advanced than it is now there's and, a lot yeah. of a lot of the modern uh, rules are based on this of course absolutely I, I mean we think of you know we learn in i learned in school that laws really didn't count until 1215 with the magna carta Look at this. Yeah. <laughs> the British laws that we are now, that we base a lot of our laws are from, from the Bible. I see that. Yeah. I love it. So I'll just, I'll just share something over here that, um, that we were going to read inside, but just it says, you know, it says um, that it, it says in many places in the Talmud, you know, that, that what's, you know, Hashem created the world with a goal in mind, which was that we should that we should refine the world by doing mitzvahs, by doing good deeds, and by being ethical according to the way Hashem wants. Um, and it's really that you know Hashem Hashem created man and Adam and Eve, and then you know then gave the Torah to the Jewish people. And what was what was the whole creation was for that purpose. So the whole creation was that that people that people in the world should use their um, free choice to to make a difference, to make the world a, a good place, a kind place, a place which is a godly place. But really, Hashem was Hashem entrusted His world in our hands. So Hashem created the beautiful world. Um, you know, this is so connected with with David, who we just lost. That he was so. Is he was very, very passionately involved in the environment and the fact that Hashem gave us this world. You know, Hashem entrusted entrusted the world in our hands. Hashem made the whole. It says that so why was Adam and Eve created on the sixth day of creation, and um, after everything else, because it was like a Hashem set the table for us. 
He set the table. He put all the delicacies there. He gave us everything that could be that we need. The world was already, and then he created the man. He didn't create man before before anything else was there. That they should have to, you know, figure it out. He gave us everything that we need, and he gave us the world to look after. Um, and that's actually it says in Bereshis that Hashem Hashem took Vayika Hashem Elokim at Adam Hashem took the person man Vayani Chehu began Eden of the Lashem he put him in the Garden of Eden to um, work it and guard it. So Hashem gave us the world to work and guard. That's why we're in the world, and that's what why Hashem created the world that we should work and guard it. So we are guardians. As mm. as. As um, people, and especially mm. Jews, we are guardians for Hashem, guardians over the world, and um, to look after the world. So we all have this um, relationship of, of as a guard or a borrower or rental, whatever you want it, to, whatever will we'll apply in the different cases for Hashem's world. And mm. We have this relationship with Hashem, as Hashem is the owner, and we're looking after it for Him. We're not doing a so, very good job. It depends. I mean, it, it's all. It, 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 it's all how you look at it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, the world is a pretty messy place, but we we have to look at it from an individual space, from what we can each do as individuals. Are we doing our part? Um, because it's made the world is made up of a lot of individuals. We all, all we all have a part in it, part in it, and we all have an influence um, yeah. and an impact. So, the highest level of being a guardian for Hashem and doing our work properly is the Shemer Chinam. The unpaid guardian. The, chinan. the unpaid guardian is basically saying, I'm gonna look at I'm gonna do the work that you want me to do. I'm gonna do the mitzvahs, I'm going to look after the world, I'm going to make the world a better place. Um, and I'm not gonna do it for any pay any payment. Yeah, one second. I'm going to turn another video. I'm going to turn another video on, and I'll be right right back in a second. Okay. Okay. Take okay. your time. This is great. Guardians of the world. Guardians of the galaxy. Guardians of the galaxy. Exactly. <laughs> I love it. I'm a big science fiction reader. I think like 50 years ago, Arlo Guthrie had some song where he, the world is in such a bad shape that we don't have to do that much to make it better. <laughs> oh, that sounds like Arlo. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. And that makes me think of a, of a, what was it? It was a book. Oh, it was his autobiography. Um, Richard Farina, Mimi Farina's husband, she she was Joan Baez's sister. He wrote a book. I've been down so long; it looks like up to me. No, yeah, 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 right, yeah. right. <laughs> so the unpaid guardian is doing the work that Hashem wants him to do. We're looking after the world, and we're not saying you have to. Oh, you have to give me this for that. You have to give me that. No, I do it at the highest level that it says to serve Hashem is. Shelo amanat lekabel pras, not um, without any intention of receiving any reward. So we do our job. This is the unpaid value. Um, the Rambam, the Maimonides, has a long description of the highest level of. He brings actually in the laws of teshuvah, which is very interesting. But the highest level of serving Hashem, serving Hashem out of love, and um, not for any and real love is you know real commitment is real love is is not trying to get anything from it not i'm giving you this so i'll get back this but i'm doing this because not because i'm scared of anything or not because i want anything but only because this is the truth this is what i'm, I'm here for and this is this is the level of abraham abraham served hashem mm -hmm. out of love he was avram oavi avram the, my lover he served hashem out of, out of love um and this is the highest level of being the shamer chinam being the Unpaid guardian. Hmm. Um, then we've got the paid guardian. The paid guardian um, is, you know, where this is more of a regular person, but this is someone who serves Hashem with an intention of getting something from it, getting some benefit. You, know, you have to pay me something. You have to give me, give me something to eat. You know, don't make me, don't make me starve. 
I'll, I'll look after the world. I'll do what I have to do. But I, I, you know, I would like to have something for it. But what's interesting over here is that the paid guardian is, is still sees what the main purpose is. So my main job is to look after the world. I'm a guardian. I'm a paid guard. My job, my, my, my definition, my, my job title, my, or my identity, my identity is I'm a guardian. I'm here to look after the world, but I want some payment for it. So it's not that, you know, the world is mine. No, I'm looking after the world. I'm doing my job. Um, but, you know, give me something for it. Um, so this is, the, this is the next level down. But again, the, guardian, the paid guardian sees what their job is. They do their job properly. And this is that their focus is on guarding the world. Then we've got the, the renter. The renter, we've already moved down. I mean, the, the law of the renter and the paid guardian is the same, but the renter is, is already, is, has a different relationship with the item that they're being given. Um, they're not, they're not, they didn't take the item into their possession in order to guard it. That wasn't why they took it. They have to guard it also. The reason they took it was because they wanted to use it. So the renter, by them, the main thing is the the main thing is that I get the world. I get you know I get all the benefits. <laughs> um, I get the I get everything that I I get all of, all my I get my my benefit over here. Um, but I'm going to pay for it. I'm going to give something for it. I'm going to give something back for it. So, God, you know, give me give me all give me the benefits of the world. Give me everything that I we're looking at the world now as differently. We're looking at as the benefits that come with the world. Give me all those things. I mean, I'll, I'll do some mitzvahs for you also, you know. Mm. It's a fair deal. So like it says, you know, somebody said, I'm going to give charity um, in order that my, my, my child should be well. Mm. Um, you know, they, or I'm, going, I'm going to do a mitzvah because of this. Because, you know, I'm going to do it for this and for that. So this is, the, this is already a level down. Here, the, 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 guardi the guardian, well, they're not really, they're, 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 their, their identity is not a guardian. Their identity is um, as a, a renter. Is is taking the item for themselves, but they're paying for it. So this is it's, it's they're not they're, they're not looking to look after it. That's not their point. Sorry, no shem shemaim. No shemaim. Right, not for the sake of heaven. They're doing it for the sake of themselves, but they they believe in heaven, um, and 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 this is a very re very reasonable thing. It says that that you know Hashem owes us a lot. That whatever He's going to give us, He's not going not going to give us enough. It says if you if you um if you hire people to work for you and you say I'm going to give you food, um then you have to get if you 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 ha if, if you have to give them, the you know the biggest most festive meal, because that's what they deserve as Hashem's, Hashem's people mm -hmm. Hashem made. So therefore you have to say specifically I'm going to give you this amount of food as a payment. And you have to be specific. So the point is that Hashem owes us a lot. And, you know, you can say, look, I look after the world for you. I do all this work. I live, I struggle. I work through all my challenges and, and, and refine the world. I light it up. You, you have to give me a lot. The final level, and this is the, the, the um, this is really the, 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 the moves into the final level, which is the borrower. Which the borrower, um, I'm sorry, I said about that, I, Hashem owing us a lot first but that was before with the renter but it really belongs to the borrower the borrower is you know we are um hashem hashem made us hashem put us in this world and we we deserve we deserve to get so to speak um why do we deserve to get it's a good question um yeah that is a good question we don't deserve anything where does that come from we're lucky Whatever we get, we're lucky. Yeah, we deserve to live in harmony, really, and that's all up to say, us. Yeah, you know, it's you know, we say often we say, you know, it's not fair. Why is you know, why do why do why why do people have to suffer? You know, why is that? Why why is you know why is it that we have to that why don't we get to live in harmony? Why do we have to have struggles and all of these things? The fact is, you know, and that's not those. That is not um, because, you know, that is not a way that Hashem gets benefit from us if we struggle. No, Hashem wants us to do mitzvahs. The mitzvahs is the payment for it. But here, you know, we live in a, we, we have, we have to, if somebody has to have a difficult life, you know, and have challenges, 
so there's no the fact is the whole world is that that's why Hashem Hashem put us down in this world the Neshama the soul doesn't want to come down into the world the Neshama wants to stay up in the heavens Hashem says you go down there and I will um, and um, and you'll you'll work in the world but they have to struggle in the world they have, the world is a dark place so Hashem so we say you know really Hashem owes us a lot he owes us he, he owes us payment he doesn't we shouldn't have to give back for it I have to do mitzvahs because you made because you put me you made me you know you give you you give me the benefits. Let me have an easier life. <laughs> um, it's a different it's a different perspective, and it's a perspective which, as human beings, we come to it a lot because we don't see godliness in a revealed way, and we say, "Hey, you know, this is not fair. Why does why, why does this have to have to happen to me?" Um. Now, how did we didn't get to the we, we're out of time. We didn't get to you know how the different laws apply um, in mm-hmm. each case. Why is it that this one has to pay? Has to pay for the um um has to um has to pay for it. if it's stolen this one doesn't um we'll have to leave that for now I guess um I didn't get what the difference is with the borrower though I just, want, I just want to get I just want to find and end off of there so it says okay that's the borrower. It, the the borrower gets all it has to pay for everything in all cases he has to pay he has to pay even you know even if it gets lost in some way which was beyond their their ability even if it's mm-hmm. owner um so this is what we say that um we don't have excuses we don't have excuses if we want to live in the world in this way is that um you know we say we say you know I want to I, I want to benefit from the world and I want to get from the world because you know I deserve I deserve as a human being to get that Hashem should give me, then, then we have to give back in full. We have to give back the item fully. We have to we have to give back what we were given the way it was it was given to us, and that is through how do we keep the world? How do we give back the world to Hashem the way Hashem gave it to us by ma- by making it a good by by keeping it as a as a godly place by doing mitzvahs in the world by doing Torah in the world. Here we're not looking at the Torah and the mitzvahs as a way of payment. We're looking at it as giving it back, giving back what we Hashem gave us the world to look after. How do we look after it through doing Torah and mitzvahs? If we want to live and benefit from the world and just take and take and take and take and not, you know, not be specific in what we owe God, then then at least do up do your part. Basically, that's the idea. Do your part. Give back the world as it was given to you. Hashem made the world so it should be a godly place. So give it back. You know, and there's no excuses. There's no excuses. To say, oh, it wasn't my fault. This and that. No, you want you wanted to benefit. You wanted to take the world. You wanted to get everything from it. So you have to give it back. There's no, you know, even if it was beyond your abilities, go beyond. Go out of your way. Go figure out. Make sure that it doesn't get that it doesn't get stolen by 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 armed uh, robbers. You know, do your part. So that uh, leave it leave it better than when you found it. Well, I guess if we're doing Torah mitzvahs, we would be we would be leaving it better than than, than the way we found it. Yeah. Um, yeah, so that's there's a whole another part of this, which is if we if somebody and um, if some if the owner comes along to do the work for the borrower, the renter, or whatever it is with the item, that's a different a different subject. with beyond what we have time for. Um, so we'll go over here. We'll stop here. It's we're five minutes over. Um, yeah, this is great. This is a really good class. Thank, Thank you. you. I learned a lot. Thank you. Thank Thanks you. for joining us, Sarah and B. So I hope Thank you were you. able to get something. I'm gonna yeah, ask Sherry for the, I'm gonna ask Sherry for the headphones. You might want to remind remind me um in the middle of the week, so I'll ask her one evening when I see it. she's. Thank see you. Sarah I B. heard I heard so, pretty well. Thank you so much. Okay, go. Go. Okay. Thank B you. won't B won't tell you, but the headphones are best for her. Yeah, they're the best. <laughs> yeah. Alan, nice having you with us. Thanks for joining. Thank you. Yes. My pleasure. Bye, guys. Bye now. Bye, Robin. Okay. Bye-bye.